Story time about how I've never farted in front of my boyfriend and can't even poop if he's in my house. Which led me to pooping in my car by mistake. Disclaimer is not my story time with me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for three months. We are so in love and we met through a dating app. He even moved into my apartment. I know some might say it's quick, but it's just meant to be. We are so in love. We get along super, super well. We're so attracted to each other. Our sexy time is like amazing. Like the best. Like the best I have ever had. And I was the one that asked him to move in with me and he said yes right away. I actually thought he was going to say no, but he was so down for it that I was so happy. Before he moved in, he actually would come over to my house all the time and he started farting in front of me it was cute funny whatever but i can't bring myself to doing it in front of him i can't even poo when he's in my apartment much less could i poo when i was at his so i found myself having to hold it in all day long anytime we would go to a restaurant i would try to go but sometimes i just couldn't go because i knew that he was there it's all become very complicated now that he moved into my place we love watching movies so we were sitting on the couch watching a movie and suddenly i felt the urge to go to the bathroom there was no way i was gonna go poop while he was there out of nowhere i jump up and tell him that i have to go out get in my car part two is up Story time about how I can't fart in front of my boyfriend or even poop when he's in the same place as me. Which caused me to poo in my car by mistake. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. Out of nowhere, I jump off the couch and tell him I have to go to the supermarket. He offers to go for me and I said no. But in hindsight, I should have said, yeah, sure, you go so that I could stay alone in the apartment by myself and go poo. I grab my keys and jump in the car. And then suddenly, I start pooping. I couldn't control myself. I couldn't believe it was happening right then and there. I stopped the car and pulled over and just pooped in my car. Luckily, I was wearing baggy pants, so you couldn't really notice it. Suddenly, I remembered I had an extra change of clothes in my car. Look behind me, and there it was, a pair of jeans. I take off my sweatpants and try to wipe myself as best as I could, and I actually went to a CVS, went into the bathroom, cleaned myself. I even bought baby wipes. Oh my god. I changed into the jeans, and I got back in the car and went home. When I get home, my boyfriend says, did you just change? Then I told him I ripped my pants somehow in the grocery store. And then he said, you didn't bring anything back from the grocery store. And I didn't know what to say. Part three is up. Story time about how I can't fart in front of my boyfriend and this caused me to poop in my car by mistake. Disclaimer is not my story time I was on me on Instagram. I told him that I had ripped my pants so I changed into other pants. And then he asked, but you didn't bring anything back from the supermarket. And I said, oh yeah, you're right. Then I told him that I went to CVS instead because I needed baby wipes, which I actually did buy them so I showed them to him. But let's remember I had just pooped on myself, so I really wanted to take a shower. So I tell him, hey babe, I'm actually going to take a shower because I just got my period. Then he says, but you just had your period last week. I just kept digging a bigger and bigger grave. Then he sits me down and says, what's going on i just couldn't lie anymore and i told him the truth that i had pooped in the car because i didn't want to poop in the apartment because he was there that's when he started laughing maniacally and told me that i was being so stupid to this day i still can't fart in front of my boyfriend and i still can't go to the bathroom i'm not sure how to fix this or how to even go about actually doing it for the first time so maybe you guys have some ideas also never going back to that cvs because i'm pretty sure i didn't put the pants in the trash and they were just lying on the floor and they saw me go in what should i do I'm 33 and my son Aid is extremely anxious when he has to be with a babysitter. This is because of the fact that he's extremely scared of the dark and last year, his babysitter locked him in the basement for 6 hours while she had her boyfriend over. He was too short to reach the light switch and cried for hours because he was afraid. Ever since then, he has been extremely wary of strangers and gets too scared to be left alone with them if I'm not around. My husband worked overseas up until 2 months ago when he finally was able to get a position in his company here. So my son has not grown to fully trust him yet. He's been in therapy for a few months now but I understand that every child is different and that each one progresses within their own pace. I called my cousin 29 and told her that I understand that she wanted no children at our wedding which is completely reasonable because most kids are very playful they enjoy running around and making noise not exactly something someone wants during one of their most special days so i explained that i would not be able to attend because i can't leave my son alone with a babysitter however my husband would still be attending for both of us when she heard this she immediately said that i can bring my son along she knows that he's a shy boy and wouldn't even be noticeable during the wedding i asked her multiple times if she was sure and she assured me that it was not an issue that it's her wedding and she's allowed to make any exceptions that she wants my cousin and i are very close as i had no siblings growing up so she's like a sister to me her fiance called me as well to say that he had no issues with my son coming along. When we went to the wedding, everything went smoothly and it was such a beautiful moment. I was so glad that I didn't have to miss this because seeing my cousin in her white dress immediately brought me to tears. No one even really noticed that my son was there because he just sat beside me quietly, probably because it was a crowd filled with a lot of people that he didn't recognize. During the reception, a number of relatives came to me saying that I was disrespectful for bringing my child along after the invitation clearly stated it was a child-free wedding. I explained that my cousin was okay with it and this caused an even bigger issue. The relatives said it was unfair that they couldn't bring their children and I was allowed to bring mine. They also said that my child was being a brat for not staying with a babysitter. This is where I may be the asshole. I told them that it isn't their wedding, therefore they should learn how to mind their own business. My mother says that it was unnecessary for me to be rude to my relatives and I should have just explained the situation to them instead of causing problems with them. Am I the asshole for being rude to my relatives for not minding their own business? Am I the asshole for telling my wife the lock on my daughter's door does not get removed 
till my brother-in-law and his daughters are out of the house. My brother-in-law, Sammy, lost his home shortly after his divorce 10 months ago. He moved in with us and brought his twin daughters, Olivia and Sloan, who are 18, with him a couple months ago. His sister, and then brackets my wife, and I have one daughter, Zoe, who is 16. And she and her cousins aren't close, but get along fine. Olivia and Sloan have no respect for Zoe's privacy, however. They're used to walking into her room and taking everything they get their hands on. Makeup, phone accessories, clothes, school laptop, etc. Zoe complained a lot and I've already asked the girls to respect Zoe's privacy and stop taking things. My wife and Sammy saw no issue with this. After all, they're girls and this is typical teenage girl behavior, which I completely disagreed with. The last straw was when Zoe bought a $60 MAC makeup kit that looks like a paint set that she saved up for over a month and one of the girls, Sloan, took it without permission and ruined it by mixing the shades together while using it. I don't know much about makeup, but that's what Zoe said when she found the kit in her bed and was crying. I told my wife and she said she asked Sloan to apologize but I got Zoe a lock after I found she was moving valuable belongings out of the house because of this incident. Sammy and his daughters saw the lock and weren't happy. Sammy asked about it and he said my daughters aren't thieves. It's normal that girls of the same age borrow each other's stuff. He said Zoe could easily get another makeup kit for 15 bucks from Walmart and shouldn't even be buying expensive adult makeup in the first place and suggested Mm. my wife take care of this defect in Zoe's personality trying to appear Mm. older than she is. He accused me of being overprotective and babysitting Zoe with this level of enablement. I told him that this is between me and my wife, but she shamed me for putting a lock on Zoe's door for her cousins to see and preventing them from spending time with her, saying I was supposed to treat them like my daughters, then demanding I remove it, but I said this lock does not get removed till her brother and the daughters are out of the house. Everyone's been giving me and Zoe silent treatment, and my wife is very much upset over this. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for not talking to my friend anymore after a bad experience with her business? I, a 39-year-old female, have known my friend since middle school. She used to be one of my bullies, but during high school we became good friends, and she was even my bridesmaid at my first wedding. My marriage was chaotic and ended up in a divorce. I needed a friend during those difficult times, wanting to go out for drinks and coffee. But she never had the time, always had excuses, and left me waiting and not showing up several times. I never held grudges against her. We've all had our own issues. A while back, I met a guy and started dating him. She once made a comment about how handsome my new boyfriend was and how ugly I used to be in middle school. But I didn't say anything because I don't like drama. I moved out of town and got married, and she started a pastry and breakfast business, and we kept in contact through Facebook. Last year, I wasn't going to be able to visit my mother for Mother's Day, so I decided to support my friend and send my mom a nice flower arrangement with breakfast from my friend's business. I talked to her, and she said she could definitely do it. I asked her for payment info, but she did not reply and ignored me for days. I kept sending her texts asking her about the order and payment for my mom's present and never got a response. I assumed she wasn't going to do it, so I talked to my sister instead and sent her money to buy my mom something else. Three days before Mother's Day, she texted me with the payment information, and I told her that I had already arranged something with my sister because she never responded. She then got upset saying that she had already bought the supplies and I was going to make her lose money by canceling the order. I apologized and asked if my sister could pay in cash when my mom got the breakfast and flowers on Mother's Day. She said yes and we set up a time frame to deliver some stuff at my mom's house to make sure my sister was there to pay for it. The day came and she never showed up. Oh. My sister waited for a couple hours and finally messaged her to ask what was going on. She said she thought the order was scheduled to be delivered the next day and she didn't have it ready. Isn't Mother's Day on? She responded very rudely and asked what I wanted her to do. I told her not to worry. It was fine and to please cancel the order so I could figure out my mom's present with my sister. And I also thanked her for her time. I don't think I was being rude, but she got offended and snapped at me, telling me, yes, that she made a mistake, but it wasn't a good reason for me to treat her like a child. She offered to do it for free the next day. I said no thank you, because it wouldn't be Mother's Day, and also explained that my mom had plans and wasn't going to be available anyway. I told her in a nice way that my intention was not to get free stuff from her, that I didn't want to hurt her business, and I'd rather get my mom something else with my sister's help. So am I the asshole? I've come to the conclusion that I'm literally the ex-girlfriend that you want to break up with, and here's why. I'm not gonna be petty and key your car or slash your tires or destroy your house or whatever girls do nowadays when they get broken up with. It's been a while for me. I'm new to this, so I probably seem very unhinged for what I did. When my boyfriend at the time came home and broke up with me instead of 
freaking out on him and, you know, begging for him back or trying to get him not to do that. I didn't do that. Instead, I took an air mattress and I took it outside underneath our patio lights and everything. And we drank wine and laid on this air mattress out in the middle of our yard. And I played Taylor Swift's Red Version because, you know, I never got a chance to actually feel that. And so that's what I wanted to do. And we cried and drank wine and talked about what went wrong. And then we watched breakup movies and I turned on Someone's Great. So we watched that together. And I wanted to make it a whole breakup weekend because, you know, we lived together at the time. It's not like I could just disappear. There was a lot to do. So I wanted to go to the fair. So we had a breakup date to the fair and we jammed out on the way there to Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson survivor by destiny's child a whole entire breakup playlist we're literally belting out in this car like i'm pretty that seems pretty unhinged right and then the next day while he was at work i sold everything that i had bought for our house within three days time packed everything up in a tiny the rest of my stuff in a tiny Four by four storage unit. I booked a one-way ticket out of the country and now I'm in Europe. So this is your sign to control what you can control. You cannot change anyone's mind. You should not ever have to beg anyone to stay. If they're going to walk away, let them leave. It doesn't have to be a catastrophic event. Just let things go and move on peacefully. Am I the asshole for being glad that my future sister-in-law had a miscarriage before my wedding? Me, 24 male, and my fiance, 22 female, are planning to get married this summer. Now, one of our bridesmaids is her sister, 27 female, who planned to attend our wedding while seven months pregnant. I obviously didn't really like that as what? I figured that her pregnancy would steal attention from us, especially as she's one of the bridesmaids. <laughs> and she's honestly such an attention seeker that I wouldn't put it past her to have gotten pregnant purposefully before our wedding in order to upstage us. But there was no way I couldn't have excluded from the wedding as she's my fiance's sister. So I just dropped it. However, she recently had a miscarriage. And while I felt really sorry for her, I was also kind of glad about it because now oh she wouldn't my. be able to upstage us at our wedding. You. Yeah, I hope your wife doesn't go through with this marriage. My fiance took me with her to visit her sister in order to console her sister. And there I said, well, you should see the glass half full. Now at least you can wear a smaller bridesmaid's dress at our wedding. My fiance glared at me and then her sister said, is your wedding the only thing you f care about? I tried to de-escalate the situation, but she just kept unloading on me about how much of a sadistic narcissist I am. Yeah. And when I've had enough... I told her, well, I'm sorry that your failed pregnancy will allow you to upstage us at our wedding you. anymore, <laughs> which made her burst into tears. My fiance tried to calm her down, but my future sister-in-law just told us to get out of her house, which we did. All hell broke loose at home when my fiance started scolding me about Good. how I could be so insensible to her sister's recent trauma. But I told her that she was the one who started to insult me over an inoffensive remark meant to cheer her. We've had a big argument about it, and now I'm sleeping in a guest room. She's still very bitter about it and says that she doesn't know if she'll be able to go through with the wedding if her sister decides to drop out of it because of me. I think she's overreacting about the whole situation no. nope. as her sister would probably stir up some trouble at the wedding anyway but maybe I should have indeed handled the situation with her miscarriage better than how I did. Am I the asshole? I have a new winner for worst company in the world. I, like many others, used to think the worst company in the world was Blumex. Yesterday, there was a coup de tête as Volkswagen violently stole Blumex's crown and became the worst company I've ever dealt with in my entire miserable life. I made a video about this yesterday if you want to watch it, but long story short, my car has broken down seven times. It is a brand new 2021 Tiguan. Got it in August. I have brought it in seven times for random ass, stupid, dumb repairs, having nothing to do with myself. Today, I go down to my parking garage. My driver's seat controls don't work. My boyfriend was the last one to drive the car and my feet don't reach the pedals. So I call Volkswagen and they're like, okay, you're going to have to call a tow truck to tow it out of there. I'm like, okay. So the tow truck driver comes, he maneuvers his tow truck all the way to the bottom of my parking garage. And then he goes, does the car start? And I'm like, yeah, I just can't drive it. And he's like, well, I can drive it. Why the hell would you make me bring this tow truck down here? And I was like, I, 